Welcome back to another episode of Cold to Community. We're going through this book, uh, talking through every chapter, and we have arrived at chapter 21 called The Center. Uh, it contains contributions from Dietrich Bonhoeffer, uh, who, as most will know, was martyred um, in Nazi Germany, and then also by Friedrich Wilhelm Forster, who was a well-known pedagogue, uh, contemporary of Eberhard Arnold, who co-founded the Bruderhof. And um, this is a challenging chapter. It talks about um, what is the center of Christian community, and clearly the center of Christian community needs to be Jesus. It needs to be um, the sacrifice Jesus made on the cross. And what Bonhoeffer gets at in this excerpt from his well-known book, Life Together, is the difference between human love and divine love. Because when you say, Doreen, everybody wants friendship, wants fellowship. Yeah, that's a very strong motivator to seek community. And um, I found this chapter extremely challenging and also kind of difficult to wrap my mind and my heart around um, because it's so demanding. It's, it's so incredibly demanding. And um, bon, Bonhoeffer, I was going to say Bonhoeffer, sorry. Bonhoeffer lays it out very directly and does not mince his words. I mean, even starting in the second paragraph, what does this mean? It means, first, that a Christian needs others because of Jesus Christ. It means, second, that a Christian comes to others only through Jesus Christ. It means, third, that in Jesus Christ we have been chosen from eternity, accepted in time, and united for eternity. That's huge. I mean, that's forever. Yeah, so, so Jesus as the mediator in all our relationships. Um, and I think it might be helpful for us to talk about sort of the attributes of human love versus um, the attributes of divine love. So in human love, I think what we experience is often a desire for validation, a desire to, um, to receive something, um, to possess, you know, a friendship, a friend, um, you know, a, a romantic partner, um, a fellowship of, of people. We want attention from that person. Um, we want um, to feel good around them. I mean, that's, that's, the, that's the reason people seek relationship, right? Um, and there's a very particular set of demands that we attach to that, or like a list of what we want to see in that other person or get from that relationship. And what happens then, Doreen, when we don't get those things? Well, then we reject that person or just like, I, I don't know, transfer blame for how it didn't work out onto that other human being, that soul, and just like dismiss them. Right. So enmity, um, hatred mm -hmm. um, is often the result of what we might think of as human love. And this, Bonhoeffer says, is precisely where spiritual love begins because spiritual love, divine love, the love that was shown in the life of Jesus, and it's actually really appropriate that we're talking about this in this time of Lent um, leading up to Easter. Um, divine love um, serves others without expectation of um, remuneration. Mm -hmm. Is that the right word? Yes, and it also, <laughs> it kind of brings to mind, I guess you could say it's a cliche, but just the prayer of St. Francis or the prayer that is attributed to St. Francis, um, especially the second part of that prayer where the, it, it asks God to, that we don't seek to be consoled so much as to console, to be loved so much as to love, and it is in pardoning that we receive pardon and, and grace, and I don't remember the whole thing off by heart, but there's a reason why so many of us um, gravitate towards that that prayer, and actually, if if you try to live it out and apply it, it's really tough. It's it's very challenging. It's very challenging because what it really demands is um, love of 
enemies, love of mm -hmm. people who don't deserve or must possibly even want our love. Um, yes, and putting our actions in front of our desires, like what we know we need to be doing. All right, so how do we, how do we, and, 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 and kind of like the flip side of that, right, is, is in, uh, I think it's in Luke 14 or somewhere, uh, Jesus' very difficult statement, um, whoever does not hate his father and mother, his biological father and mother, his brother, his sister, his wife, his children, um, is not worthy of me. So on the one hand, we're asked to love our enemies. On the other hand, we're asked to, I don't think hate in, in, in the sense of, I think it, it means that we hold them in lower esteem than we do our connection with Jesus. So basically, Jesus as the mediator, um, nothing can come above and nothing can come below. We have to come through to another person through um, this relationship, which sounds very sort of theoretical um, and intense. And, intense. <laughs> and uh, I'm reminded of a, a line from, from Hannah Coulter, the novel by Wendell Berry, uh, where he says, um, I'm not at all, I'm not quite sure exactly, I says, I'm not all the way capable of these things, but this is, these are definitely the right instructions. <laughs> um, so very much, you know, this is a state of perfection. I think even Forster says this somewhere. Um, he says, um, pardon me, only in Gethsemane and upon Calvary was human society perfected. For the natural man, this is a bit later, for the natural man cannot really be a brother. Um, and I think that's really important to realize that we are, we have to set our eyes on this and know that these are the right instructions. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it doesn't happen only once in life. It happens many times. Um, Forster here at the end says, of course, Christianity is life, says Kierkegaard, but first it passes through death. Only if we realize through how many deaths everyone must pass who really desires to be a brother can we grasp the ultimate condition of human community and therewith also the eternal reference of the cross to the social question. So, um, very uh, intense, yeah. demanding stuff. But I guess I think it cuts to the truth. It cuts to the truth. It cuts to the truth of the gospel, and that's that's why for me it was it was a good chapter to read, and also one that I had to reread multiple times because um, it pointed out to me that human love so often rejects the truth, actually, um, and how divine love inspires that instead. Right. And I think really the moral of the story um, is, you know, the thing is to stick, is to stick with it, right? Stick with it and, um, you know, you're going to have to go through these multiple deaths. Yeah, it's um, a pilgrim's progress. It's a pil pilgrim's, <laughs> exactly, For pilgrim's sure. progress, you know, hopeful, faithful, and eventually you'll get to the other side. So uh, thanks for reading along with us. We'll see you next week, Chapter 22. Have a great day.